Hello there, everybody. The verdict is back for a new season. We will run until the end of this year's flat season. And we're going to have uh, lots of horses to analyse every week. And the analysis is going to be based on the course track data that is always available for you on the Racing TV website. We like to debunk myths on this particular show, telling you what actually happens out there on the race course according to the data, rather than what your eye perhaps tells you sometimes. And we've got some very interesting performances to analyse this week. It's been a really good week in terms of classic trials. We've had the Craven meeting, we've had the Greener meeting at Newbury as well, and they've thrown up some very interesting performances. So the show basically this week will concentrate on three-year-olds, although I've chucked a two-year-old in there, and there's one older horse as well. So let's get started and I want to take you to Kempton Park where I think we saw a very good three-year-old in action and this is a horse who I think will head to Royal Ascot ultimately. Slip of the pen it was the 9-4 to four on favourite to win the condition stakes on the 10th of April. Head of Royal Rhyme who was 9-2, to two, Legend of Leros 13-2 to two, and the bottom two any prices really. Tens ensued and uh, Alzizan 125 to 1. But it was Slip of the pen who put up an impressive performance here in quite an interesting contest. I'll send them on their way. He jumped out of stall number two under James Doyle. He beat Ensued from stall five and Legend of Leros from stall four. There he is. He's just second last as they come out of the stalls. A little bit tardy away. How was this race run in the early stages? Well, it was a quick, slow, quick tempo. An OXO race, if you like. They went quite hard early on to try and establish positions and then the pace visibly eased down the back straight. And at that point, Slip of the Pen gets a little bit keen under James Doyle. Here he is sat in second last. He's nicely on the bridle, traveling quite well at this point. And the pace is honest and even to here. But they are going to steady it fairly shortly down the back. And your eye will tell you that. Look, he's getting quite keen there. The pace is slackening out in front. And now he's shuffled back to last place. But James Doyle doesn't panic. That fourth and fifth furlong, according to the course track sectionals, where the pace really did steady. But then they picked it up again once they turned into the home straight. And the winner quickened sharply. I really want to highlight what he did through the seventh furlong. 11.17 was what he fired to get himself to the lead. He makes use of the cutaway down on the inside and he sprints into the lead. Three furlongs, the final three were 34.62. Okay, that's just a number, but if you compare that to the runner-up, 35.12. He's way quicker than the runner-up, which was ensued. Here he goes now. He's just fired on the bridle, 11.17, to get to that furlong pole. That's really, really impressive. It's a sharp turn of foot without being asked to do too much by James Doyle. And then he's green out in front. He wanders to his left and he's just nudged out hands and heels in the closing stages of the race. I fancy he'd have been more impressive if the pace had been more honest throughout. And he was given a bit of a task because he got shuffled back when the pace steadied. But his turn of foot got him out of trouble. You see here, angling for the cutaway and he sprints clear of his rivals. Now many will want to ask, what did he beat? I don't mind what he's been. It doesn't matter if they're no good at all. I want, to, I want to look at the clock and see how well he quickened. And boy, was he impressive through those final three furlongs. Look at him drifting a bit. Still green, doesn't quite know what he's doing. But he's two from two in his career now. He's a very impressive individual. And I think that it's a possibility that this horse could run in the St James's Palace Stakes at Royal Ascot. He's got some good entries, 2,000 guineas. He's in the Dante, he's in the Derby as well. His pedigree would suggest that he doesn't perhaps want a mile and a half, and maybe a mile, maybe a tiny bit further will always suit him, for he is a horse with lots and lots of speed as he flashed there, and there's a load more to come. And I think the St James's Palace Stakes could be right up his street. Now, we're going to stay at Kempton Park on the 10th of April for the Snowdrop Phillies Stakes. Listed status for this contest, over a mile. Uh, Laurel was the 8 to 13 favourite. San Angelo was 100 to 30. 6 to 1, Life of Dreams and Lightship, 11 to 1. Now, this was run on the same day 
as um, slip of the pen. And this was a slower time for the older horses than slip of the pen produced, but that's just a function of how the race was run. Quite a steadily run affair that is won by Laurel in impressive fashion under Ryan Moore for uh, the Gosdens. Now, Laurel was highlighted here on the verdicts last season uh, when winning here at Kempton. And I suggested that she was a, a, a group one horse and she duly went on to run really well in the Sun Chariot at Newmarket uh, when finishing second in that group one in the autumn. And I think she's going to win a group one this season. And this run here has just told me that all of her old ability remains intact. Now we had a steady gallop in the early part of the race. You can see some horses quite keen uh, in behind at this stage. Tango tonight in particular, the white cap down towards the rail, uh, very keen in the early stages. Ryan Moore sat nice and handy on Laurel at this stage in a race that was steadily run. The finishing speed percentage available on the Racing TV website, 109.41. So she's quickened up and come home 9.41% quicker in the final three furlongs than she ran the rest of the race. Visibly, it looks like a steady gallop, and that's what the numbers tell us. They also tell us that she's got a blinding turn of foot. I was impressed with Slip of the Pen quickening up and doing that 11.17 in the previous race we looked at. When the same furlong here, albeit they've gone steadier in this race, she goes 10.95. She joins the sub-11 club with this blinding turn of foot and Ryan Moore is not too hard on her in the closing stage. Look at her quicken there. She then goes again and she puts her rivals away very comfortably. Light ship in second place with the green cap and Sound Angela running on late in the piece in the blue and yellow towards the outside. But that was very, very impressive from Laurel in terms of a piece of work really for her. She did it in hand. She was just nudged out by Ryan Moore. Yet the figures tell us she was going very fast. A final three furlongs, 33.97. Slip of the pen, you remember, 34.62. So although the overall time of this race wasn't as quick as slip of the pen, her sectionals point her to being a group one horse in waiting. She's going to win one. She's definitely going to win one. This was all too easy for her. Up against listed fillies, it was an OK race. It wasn't particularly strong. But the clock tells us She's all there. She's ready to go and run in much better company. And with that in mind, she holds some interesting entries. Bet 365 Mile, the Lockinge, uh, the Middleton Stakes at York as well she's entered into. So it'll be interesting to see where they want to go with her. She's very speedy. I'm not sure she'd stay beyond a mile because she's got so much speed. She might always be best at that sort of trip. And look at her there. She's big. She's strong, she's a real unit, and she hits the ground quite hard. Pedigree suggests she would always want decent ground, and that she wants to utilise her turn of foot as well on, on a decent surface. But she does hit the ground quite hard, so she wouldn't want it too firm out there. Maybe just good ground uh, will suit her when she gets back on the turf, but she'll win a Group 1 uh, this year. I'm absolutely certain of it. OK, from two nice performances at Kempton, we're going to go to the Craven meeting. A new market to have a look at uh, the Phillies trial for the 1,000 guineas, the Nell Gwynn. Produced quite a good performance uh, from the winner, but was it too good to be true? We'll have a look at it now. Coppice 2-1 to one favourite. Ferry Cross 9-2 to two for Godolphin. 17-2 to two and bigger the rest. That includes Mama's Girl, the winner, who was backed into 16-1, to one, having been uh, 28. So let's have a look at what happened out there in the context of conditions. The ground, uh, just on the easy side of good, but they were running into a very strong headwind, which meant there were some quite slow final times uh, on the day. In the end, Mama's Girl, who you can see there has just missed the break, uh, is quite impressive under Sean Levy, given a, a patient ride, and running against what I would say is the, the usual bias at Newmarket on the rolling mile. You normally want to be prominent. Even making the running is a good thing there, uh, generally. But she's held up, having been a little bit slow into stride, and she's held up in a contest that was evenly run. The finishing speed percentage, 103.58, so she's finished off 3.58% quicker in the final three furlongs. She ran the, the rest of the race. So uh, they've not dawdled, they've just got a, a decent even gallop, I think, here. She's tucked in, she's out of the, the teeth of the gale, remember, running into that uh, headwind. Whereas Fairy Cross, who finishes second, completely and utterly exposed to that headwind, and she was always prominent on this uh, even gallop. Whereas the winner, Tucked in here, getting some shield from that wind. 
And when she's asked to go, she comes home very strongly. And visually, you'd probably think, well, she's quickened up tremendously well to go and get her rivals and surge past them. But really, she's just come home evenly. Her last three furlongs, 36.7, the runner-up in the golf in blue, 37.58. So she's come home quicker, but they were quite even her furlongs. She's just keeping going, in my opinion. 12.03, a 12.06, and a 12.61 into that wind. Um, I think horses were getting tired in front of her, stopping, and Sean Levy has just ridden a good, even race on her, and she's just kept going all the way to the line to go past horses that are getting a little bit tired. But it's a decisive success, and Connections are very much entitled to have a go at the 1,000 guineas. But I don't think, although it looks like she's displaying a blinding turn of foot to go and pick up those in the middle of the track, I don't think she does. The figures certainly don't suggest that. Let me remind you, 12.03, a 12.06, a 12.61. She just keeps going. She just keeps running evenly and sustains her speed all the way to the line. Now, she's worth a crack, of course, at the, the 1,000 guineas, but um, her pedigree would suggest that she is all speed. Uh, she's by Havana Gray. She's got another furlong to go in the guineas as well. So the trip would be something of a problem, but as you see, I hit the line there. Uh, she certainly wasn't stopping, was she? So she'd have a chance of getting the trip, you think. She's a, a nice filly and she handles Newmarket. She's uh, won here before and handling the track is uh, a big plus as far as the guineas is concerned. But the numbers suggest that maybe she's going to have to find a little bit more if she's going to win a thousand guineas. But nonetheless, a legitimate contender for the Hannon team. Back to Newmarket then for a maiden filly stakes, two-year-olds here. And we're going to look at the, the most dominant two-year-old performance of the season so far from Persian Dreamer, who's an 11 to 4 shot. Dorothy Lawrence for the Carl Burke team went off 85 to 40, live my life sevens, and it was 8 to 1 and bigger the rest. And this was a tremendous performance from Persian Dreamer, who beat Dorothy Lawrence, and she's smart. She jumps out of stall four, and I just watch her from the gates here. That's a little bit slow. She just jumps in the air a bit and she just takes a few strides to, to get going and to find her rhythm. And she was um, quite slow through the first furlong of this race. Thereafter, she was the fastest through all of the next four furlongs, according to the course track sectionals. Um, after a tardy start, the second furlong was actually her fastest of the race. She ran 11.36 on the bridle to get herself into contention and then through the fourth furlong, so from two to one, as we're just coming to the two pole now, she went home in 11.44, and that sealed the deal. The figure's telling us that she is utterly dominant throughout this race, and if she hadn't jumped in the air a little bit coming out of the stalls, I think she'd have been fastest through that first furlong as well, and therefore fastest in every single furlong of the race. Totally and utterly dominant. She still wins three and a quarter lengths, just nudged out, from the filly who was well found in the market, Dorothy Lawrence from the Carl Burke team. And this is another winner for Ammo Racing, who are going great guns at the moment, particularly their two-year-olds, ridden by Kevin Stott. But the figures tell us this filly is very, very good. A final three furlongs, 35.53. Despite drifting to her left and looking a little bit green under pressure, she runs out resolutely to the line. She wins by more than three lengths. And I think Royal Ascot beckons for her, for sure. You remember last year here on The Verdict, we highlighted, dramatised, when she won here at Newmarket, when she impressed on the sectionals. This filly has done just that as well. She really has impressed in, on the numbers. She was quickest through four of those five furlongs. In 11.36, 11.44, she fired whilst being green tells us that she's very good. And I think she's going the way of dramatised. I think she'll head to the Queen Mary and I really wouldn't be surprised if she wins that Queen Mary at Royal Ascot. I'd be very keen on her. We were keen on Dramatised last year. She won that Queen Mary. I think this filly can do exactly the same. So the same day as the previous two races that we looked at, at Newmarket, the 19th of April, got a maiden filly stakes over a mile and Silver Lady went off the even money favourite, very well found in the market uh, for Godolphin, Charlie Appleby and uh, William Buick. Uh, Ludmilla was 16 to 5, Mubija was 7 to 1, C. Claret was 10s and 16s, and uh, bigger the rest. It was a very interesting race. This. I think it's going to work out very well going down the line. And 
It was an impressive win from Silver Lady. Stall seven for Silver Lady in the Godolphin Blue. And she gets the better of Never Ending and Rowea in third. The second and third, both horses that I think we want to put in racing TV trackers. Now look at the look at the winner. Look how keen she is. Look at her head. High in the air, giving William Buick a hard time of it at this stage. Where's the second horse? All the way back there. Never ending and Rewea is in, in there in third third spot in the uh, Shadwell colours. So the first thing to say is that Silver Lady's done very well to win because she was really keen early on. It didn't go very hard early. It was quite a steadily uh, run affair. Finishing speed percentage, 105.49. So she's finished off 5.49% quicker in the final three furlongs as she ran the rest of the race. So it wasn't a race where they went a very strong gallop and she got something of first run on the runner-up who is an absolute must for your racing track, TV tracker and will probably win next time up. But I do think that this filly who wins is pretty useful. Her final three furlongs, 36 0.68, so quite even really. Remember, they're still dealing with a, a headwind, so we're, we're not use, having sectionals of under 11 seconds or anything like that, and that's a function of the, the conditions that they faced out there. But she still ran home evenly, despite being keen in the early part of the race. Now never ending, this side, the Tubley Park colours, beginning to pick up and runs on really well in the closing stages, but had too much to do. She stayed on nicely and indeed, she fired uh, last three furlongs almost exactly the same as the winner, but she was too far back. And now this winner quickens. Despite being keen, she quickens. Good turn of foot, 11.78 through the seventh furlong to seal the deal. And she wins, despite just wanting to hang to her left, looking a little bit green, lugging a bit under pressure. But I think she's very good. If she can do this, having pulled very hard early on and used up loads of petrol, and she's a filly to keep a close eye on going forward. The second running on very well, never ending, and uh, she probably wants a little bit further. She got lost in the dip a bit. If you watch her, she sort of loses her action a little bit down in the dip, and then she runs on again. Look, she had to be switched there as well. She's a bit all over the place in second place, but she'll learn a lot from this, and she'll be winning in the near future, probably next time up. Remember the name, never ending. And remember Silver Lady, Focus on the runner-up if you want, but don't forget the winner who did everything wrong in this race, pulling too hard, using petrol, lugging under pressure, but still was capable of running out a ready enough winner. It was put to Charlie Appleby afterwards whether the 1,000 guineas would be possibly on the agenda for uh, Silver Lady. I think he is of a mind to go a little bit softly, softly with her at this stage of her career rather than pitch straight into a, into a group one. But I think she's pretty good. I think she could be underestimated as well. And that is a race that I think will work out very strongly in the future. There'll be plenty of winners coming out of it. And more fillies to have a look at now in the shape of the Rossdale's Maiden Philly Stakes. There were seven films at Newmarket last week. 15 to 8, Propense at the head of the market. Britannica 9 to 4, 11 to 2 times. I Spring Dawn 13 to 2 in 14s. And big up uh, the rest. Interesting. Uh, Maiden Phillies event. This it was won by uh, Propense, got the better of uh, Springdorn, and Britannica was back in third place. Um, Propense had had a wind operation prior to uh, this run and had uh, a little bit more experience than uh, Spring Dawn, who was uh, making uh, her debut. And you can see in this early part of the race that Propense is pretty keen. She's in here in a race that was quite steadily run. She's pulling pretty hard in behind is the runner-up in the Godolphin Blue. Well worth keeping a close eye on uh, through this race and then put her in your uh, racing TV tracker for she's sure to win a race uh, like this, a maiden, in the very near future. Look at Propense doing everything wrong, but I think she's pretty good. She's a very speedy filly. The gallop here was steady. That's possibly why she was pulling. Finishing speed percentage, 107.17. So it really was a bit of a dawdle out there. They didn't go a good gallop and it made Propense a bit keen. But I loved the way she tanked into this contest. She just almost dragged Ryan Moore between horses from the two to the one. And then she quickened the fifth furlong, 11.91, and the sixth furlong, 11.46. Look how strongly she's traveling there. Now she's got a what? A couple of lengths advantage over the runner-up who's here. 
who you'll notice doing really good late work. She runs on very strongly. And she runs on so strongly that her final three furlongs from a, a poorer position was identical to the winner. They both ran 35.68 for the final three furlongs, but the winner had a positional advantage. There she is tanking Ryan to the front and she quickens now and quickens well at 11.46. Just catches the runner up a little bit flat footed, but she then runs on stoutly in the closing stages and gets pretty close to Propense, who's coming to the end of her tether in the closing stages. She's a speedy, keen filly, Propense. I'm not sure she wants a yard further than seven furlongs. In fact, she could probably come back to six. But she's won it pretty well, but you've got to really like Spring Dawn in second place. Definitely put her in your racing TV tracker. She's a physically a, a, a different being. Propense is a big, strong, keen-going sort, whereas the runner-ups quite small, uh, fairly stocky, but she's got loads of ability. And she was going to run Propense down in another 50 yards, I'm sure of it. I think they're both very useful. Propense might just always be her own worst enemy. Look at that big cross nose band she wears. That's because they know she's keen, they know she wants to do too much. She did too much early on, but her engine got her to the front and she just got first run on Spring Dawn. And that won her the race. They're both useful. Spring Dawn, I'm sure, will win next time up for good off, and she's certain to take a step forward. And this filly, with Sir Michael Stout, I'm sure will be finding some uh, decent opportunities as well. I like both of them, but for the future, given their nature and the way they go about things, Spring Dawn would definitely be uh, the one for me and is a must for you next time up, wherever she turns up. So those were the races that I chose for the verdict uh, this week. Uh, there was obviously lots to go at with uh, Newbury and indeed uh, the Craven itself at uh, Newmarket, which was won by Indestructible. Um, there was nothing remarkable in the figures uh, that Indestructible um, produced. The course track uh, numbers showed him to uh, run pretty evenly uh, throughout this contest. I think the finishing speed percent is just over 103%. So it was, it was an evenly run race. It wasn't a dawdle in a sprint. I think you can believe the result. Uh, it's indestructible. However, we'll have to improve, I think, if he's going to win uh, the Guineas. But he's, he's legitimately in there with a chance for ammo racing. And I wouldn't be surprised that if he could make the could make the frame, but possibly not win it. But he was a, quite an impressive winner on the day. I think it, that might just have been his race, but uh, we will see. Uh, the numbers didn't throw up anything very exciting, but he ran quite evenly through that contest. Newbury, um, I, I didn't find anything at Newbury really, and the problem was the, the ground there. The, there was an awful lot of rain. Uh, it was uh, very wet, wasn't it, over the two days of the, of the Greenham meeting? And what a mess the Greenham itself was with, with Chaldean getting rid of uh, Frankie um, early on in the piece. He galloped on uh, with the others and um, I wouldn't be put off him for, for the guineas just because that happened there uh, at the start. But it's a shame that uh, he didn't run. But as I say, the figures were skewed a fair bit because of the, the very soft ground. So big going allowances needed if you're analysing uh, that meeting in terms of the sectionals. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, what we uh, brought to you today. I thought um, Slip of the Pen is a very interesting horse going forward. Possibly St James's Palace Stakes for him and Persian Dreamer, a Queen Mary filly for sure after debut success at Newmarket. We'll see you next week. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.